Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. We're coming to you live throughout the day from the Singapore FinTech Festival. And joining me for this segment, we have Justin Ortiz, who's the chairman of the Union Bank of Philippines. And we're going to talk about teching up the Philippines. Justin, it's great to have you on set. Thanks so much for joining us on Trade Talks. And it's been interesting to watch Union Bank's transformation and its journey from a bank to the goal of being a technology company. Tell us more about that. Well, we clearly know that the bank needs to digitize on its own. Our customers are also digitizing. We need to drive our costs down to a marginal cost of zero. We need to integrate. Our belief is that banking will be invisible, so we need to integrate in platforms and ecosystems that exist, whether closed loop platforms or open platforms. Most of those integrations are through an API platform or through SDK, software development kits. Uh, we need to introduce artificial intelligence. We need to be able to manage data and do contextual and cognitive insighting to make it useful. The minute you start describing your world requiring those skill sets, those capabilities, those tools, then clearly we're not talking of a bank. Even though the function is a banking function, but we need to do things and think and build capabilities of a technology company in order to be able to be truly and meaningfully customer-centric. All right, well, let's talk about some of the emerging technologies, particularly blockchain, that is allowing Union Bank to do this. So we're working on uh, two, two tracks on the blockchain. So the first track is doing blockchain in our existing businesses. So one of our biggest businesses, aside from lending and deposit taking and investments, is cash management solutions. So we get a primary company and he has an ecosystem, an ecosystem of distributors down the line to the small village store and an ecosystem of suppliers. By putting all of this, this financial supply chain on the blockchain, we're now able to have one version of truth. We're able to track the goods and the paperwork that goes with the payment. And what we couldn't do before, which we can do today, is automatically do lending or extend credit both to the distributors and dealers and uh, village stores and knowing that payment is coming from the principal who is our customer and we can also do the same on the back end on the uh, suppliers so that is how blockchain giving us one provenance of truth authenticating verifying the goods and the paperwork that goes with it the identity of the different parties involved in the chain and that now allows us to do credit for the principal it, it gives them better information better data on all these participants in their ecosystem actually it helps them sell more well let's talk about one of the projects where you're actually leveraging the blockchain based technology um, send i2i that's a collaboration with union bank of philippines and ocbc tell us more about that so what we've done is, in the Philippines, we have a lot of overseas workers, remittances. It's very expensive. They remit about $250 a month, and the fees are 5 to $10. We're dealing with people that, uh, no, 5 to 10% rather, right? So we're talking That's about expensive. 12 to $25 yeah. to people who earn $2 a day. So it's like you're taking away a week or two of earnings. So what we've done is connected rural banks together, their untrusting and self-interested parties into the blockchain and created what you might call a Airbnb mm -hmm. of branches, right? So now a rural bank has access to 2,000 branches nationwide of other rural banks. So that was step one. Step two was to be able to connect these rural banks who are unbanked themselves to the national retail payment system of the Philippines and to SWIFT. So that's what we've done. And our partner is OCBC. And now we're able to make a remittance cheaper 
in real time, but most importantly, the remittance use case is under the control of the sender. Today, because it goes through multiple handoffs, it usually ends up in cash to the beneficiary, with the beneficiary free to do what it wishes with that money. Many times, it creates social dislocation because people come back and find out that they've been supporting another family, for example. So this is a great, not only cost and time efficiency gain, but more importantly, it gives the sender control over where that money is going to be used because it's account to account from Singapore down to the smallest rural village in the Philippines using an existing infrastructure, which is the rural banks, that we have now connected through the blockchain to the payment rates, both domestic and international. All right, Justin, thanks so much for joining us on Trade Talks. Okay. And thank you for joining me from the Singapore FinTech Festival. I'm Jill Malantrino, Global Market Reporter at NASDAQ.